and go. Okay. My name is Ted Putnam and I'm the Forest Services expert on fire shelter and fire clothing and packs and equipment. And <clears throat> we're out here doing an entrapment investigation on the Duke Fire on the Tano National Forest where there were six fatalities. And what we're going to attempt to do here is walk through where we found the entrapped victims. And to assist in that, we've laid some clothing down approximately where they were lying. And what we're looking at is we go back up this road and the clothing and some of the sites beyond are some of the different pieces of equipment and that are lined out along the road. And all these pieces of equipment will degrade and give off what we would call color markers. And the color markers, then we can tell something about the temperature, the duration, and that'll give us a closer idea of what the people actually went through. And we're at the lower end of the entrapment site, and we're going to move up here then. Okay. This is the site where we found the first victim, and this victim was lying face up with his head up against the log and there wasn't any clothing in the immediate vicinity, but there is a cloak down here. And this glove is seen an awful lot of heat. This glove is normally 10 inches long, and I'd estimate it's about 5 inches. Now, so that shows a lot of heat. And with this particular glove, it's heat set both on the palm side and on the back side. And a lot of times in entrapments, you only see heat set on the back side and not the palm side. And it's actually been burnt right here where this hole is. And since it's found in a place here where there aren't any fuels, we would surmise that the person here wearing this went through a lot of heat. Okay, from here where we found the first clothing down in the creek bed, uh, it's just a short distance up to where we found the closest fire shelter up where Hank standing. We're going to go ahead and move on up now to that shelter and show some. Now we're at the site of the first shelter and the thing that's really unusual about this shelter and other entrapments where I've seen the shelters and equipment that's came off of them is that virtually all the foil's gone off of this. and. As we'll see later, there's a trail of oil that goes on up the road as if pieces are falling off as this, we surmise this person was moving down the road after the initial entrapment and losing pieces of oil as he went down the road. And one of the things about this shelter is that there are parts of this that in a normal entrapment are underneath uh, close to the ground that never show any heat damage at all in this shelter has shown uh, complete heat damage all over. And one of the things to note on this one is there's normally a 8 by uh, 4 foot panel on here and it's missing from right here. And later on up the road we'll, there is a piece then that belongs to this shelter. And from that, we can surmise that the person was definitely moving from up the road and heading down. And at this point, would appear to have dropped the shelter and just headed. Okay, right now, we're about uh, 150 yards above where we found the first fire shelter. And we found some tools in this area. And as you can see, the handles are completely gone off off the tools and we can't be sure that the man that ran down the road here that that was uh, their tool that is an indication of how hot it got here. Okay, now we're about 250 yards up above where we found the first fire shelter and this is a strip that's 
the flap then that would be off the fire shelter that we found down below. And as I said earlier, it's an indication that the person was going downhill. And here too is a piece of foil and there are pieces of foil from here on up the road to the main entrapment site. And these pieces, we're not sure if the shelter was drug on the road and came off or the wind turbulence tore them or exactly what happened. Now we're about 50 yards above where we saw the strip that came off of the, one of the flaps. And this piece of shelter here is roughly the size of about half of one side of the shelter. And one of the things you can tell about the foil itself is that it can start to have a little bit of color markers and may not show up, but it's kind of a brown line that runs through here. And what that's showing is that the foil starting to get up to a higher temperature, maybe around 1,000 degrees. Whereas most of the foil probably was somewhere in the saw temperatures of 500 degrees to cause the delamination, yet less than, say, a thousand, where you'd start to see some discoloration, or if you get up above 1,200 degrees, then you'd actually start to see some melting. But most of the pieces I found along the road here did not see the really high temperatures. They were more in that 500 to 1,000 degree temperature range. Right now the view's looking back down the creek from the way we came and what we found right here is a right and left glove. And these gloves are about like a person would have taken them up and just thrown them off down onto the ground as they were heading along in this direction. And the next thing we can see here is the pack sack. And the thing to notice about the pack sack, a lot of the thinner webbing and things like that have been melted and yet the pack itself is pretty much uh, is in pretty good shape and the contents of the pack don't show any heat uh, markers at all there's no like there's paper inside and it's not brown or anything and here we have the fire shelter so at this person or at this place the person pulled the fire shelter out of the case and as they proceeded up the road here a little bit further we can find the inside softer plastic container and the pole ring so at this point the person has pulled up the fire shelter and because of the trail that they're leaving they're headed up the road whereas the first victim we found was uh, the markers were heading down the road And here we have a hard hat, which is typical of some of the hard hats. The straps and things on the inside are melted and the plastic things, and yet they're not, they didn't see so much heat that they're totally gone either at this point. Now we're a little further up the road and this is the first place there's a lot of equipment at. There's tools on both sides of the road. There's the trail of pieces of fire shelter that we've been seeing. And we have the water jugs up here that the people were bringing along with them as they moved up the road. And further on up the road, about another 50, 80 yards is where the main entrapment site was. We're a little further up the road now, and this is the site where two people were found under one fire shelter. And the two men in this case were lying uh, head to head with their feet 
sticking out either end of the fire shelter. And in terms of the fire shelter, it's shown quite a bit of damage, but a lot of the foil is still intact. And one of the things that's different about this fire shelter than the one we just saw down below is that the end flap that's tucked under in a normal entrapment, which is this piece down here, doesn't show the heat damage that the main part of the shelter. And what that would indicate uh, different than the lower one was that this one at some point was more in a standard deployment mode where the end flaps and the side flaps were underneath the person and facing the ground. The other thing that we can see here is a pair of gloves, a right and left large pair of gloves, and these gloves, unlike the ones down below, are still fairly soft and pliable. And they probably seen a little bit of heat, but nowhere near what the heat was down below. These are actually, you know, doing a good job of protecting the person at this point if they're wearing them. The other thing is that one of the, the lower person was wearing a pack, and it's pack number 13, and the hard hat over here is hard hat number 13. And the inside of the hard hat has melting around the bottom rim as as if the heat were more intense lower to the ground but the parts up above in the strap aren't damaged at all showing that the heat wasn't uh, really super hot either. The contents again of this pack came through okay. There's paper inside and we didn't see any indication of it browning. And one of the policies that we've suggested is that if entrapments are shorter duration and everything that people wear these packs inside with the idea that they would keep the hot foil off their backs and one of the things we're looking at here again today is if they use the packs in the shelter is there any kind of significant pack damage and we are seeing about 500 degree damage here and there on some of these packs but basically the packs are coming through you know looking pretty good so the pack up to about 500 degrees and that's the temperature that you start to have delamination on the shelter. And then a little further up the road between here and the next victim there's a pair of Lexan yellow goggles and I'm not really sure what the temperature is but the Lexan will melt at the same temperatures that our hard hats would melt at. This is the site of the fourth victim and in this case the victim was laying with their arm out and their head off towards the fire shelter. In this case the fire shelter uh, is pretty much totally delaminated. It doesn't have some of the characteristics of if the end flaps and side flaps remain under your body. The other thing that we can see for the first time is some temperature indications that the glass cloth itself is starting to get awfully hot when it turns this really whitish color. And glass cloth, the temperature that it's good to is around 2200 degrees. And I'm not really sure, but this is probably uh, saw some temperatures that are getting up above like 1800 degrees, whereas most of the glass cloth was still temperatures probably uh, lower than a thousand degrees. A lot of the foil here, even though it's delaminated, it's not showing some of the characteristic markers that it would show if it was actually starting to melt. And if a fire shelter like this, even though it delaminates, if it can stay intact without breaking, then it can still offer protection for the people. In this case, what we see is a lot of more damage than I've ever seen on fire shelters. We've seen the almost total delamination before, but in those cases, the people we know remained motionless from their witness accounts later and were able to survive it even though they had delaminated. So what I've been looking for here is just to see if there's any indications that it was melted, because if you had a melt occur, and, and that would open it up. But here, we'd probably be a little more uh, 
suspect that maybe there's some movement going on that's causing part of the damage or extreme wind turbulence could also account for it. Because when the foil temperature heats up, it begins to make the, lamp or the foil laminate itself a lot more brittle. And in this case, just a little bit above here is the contents of one more pack. And here's a piece of shelter and then a medium sized glove. And in this glove, in this case, has shown a lot of heat set. It hasn't been burnt, but it's uh, shrunk maybe to about two-thirds of the size that it was originally. It, this is where we found the fifth and sixth fatality victims, and the victim here was a woman, and in this case, her fire shelter, she was wearing a yellow hard hat, and it's melted to the glass cloth. That, her shelter is, the foil is mostly in pretty good condition. It didn't see as much heat as the lower ones, but it is totally delaminated. And the person at this point, there's a pack number here, number six, and again, this fire shelter, the foil itself is in a lot better shape. And almost all the pieces are here for these two shelters. And again, this one is totally delaminated all the way through. And just above this pack, there's another pack, number 19, and uh, we don't know whose packs were which. And further up the road here is another fire shelter, and there is no victim associated with it. And up around the corner was the last fire shelter, and the fire shelter up on top of the hill the shelter itself looked awfully good and it looked like a person should have been able to survive. All the pieces were there and, and the parts underneath didn't show a lot of heat. And I guess that pretty well concludes it. Good job, Tiff. <laughs>